Hi, welcome back to the channel. I've got some exciting stuff. We're gonna be talking about hearing the voice of God. All I can do is share my personal experience. We all have our history with the Lord. This is how he speaks to me. A personal relationship is very individual. God's not gonna speak to me the same way he's gonna speak to John. That doesn't mean he loves him any more or me any less. It really has to do with he understands how to speak to us individually. He knows our personality. He knows what will work for me and what won't work for John. Taking all of that into consideration, consideration. I want you to just think about a mother with her children. She doesn't deal with all of them the same because they're all different, right? That's part of being a parent is adapting to your child, understanding this is their capabilities, this is where they're at, and you just kind of meet your kids where they're at. That's how gentle and good the Lord is. He meets each of us where we're at. We're all at different places with him. For me, when I want to hear the voice of God, it's not about doing more. It's actually more about simplifying my life, scaling things back so I can be fully present and available for when he decides to speak. God isn't a dog that we can just say, okay, I'm ready to hear from you now and God's got to serve us. No, if we want to hear the voice of the Lord. We have to humble ourselves. When we scale back and remove all distractions, when he decides to speak, we are actually able to hear him. If we're always doing something, even if they're good things, let's say you're watching Derek Prince, who I highly recommend. I could be listening to Derek Prince, learning and growing, but if the Lord wants to speak to me personally, Personally, I'm not able to do that because I'm too distracted with hearing the word through Derek Prince. Right? I'm married to John, right? If there was a book written about John Turk and I were to pick it up and read it and understand his history and all the stuff that was written in the book, does it mean I really know John? Not really, right? I've experienced John through conversations, through direct communication, through intimacy and connection. I know John because I've had years and years of amazing, incredible memories and moments and conversations with this man. I want you to think about Jesus. When he returns, are you going to say, yeah, Jesus, I read that book about you. What about the moments and the memories that we could have shared together? It's one thing to have information from a book. It's another thing to have an experience with God. We can't force that, but we can ask for it. He has promised that if we ask and keep on asking, he will give it. I've told you guys this before. It's a little joke that I have with the Lord. I'm greedy. I want to have that relationship with you. I look at David, Abraham, and Moses. These men were your friends. I want to be your friend. A friend spends in intentional time and care. A friend remembers things you like. A friend knows it's your birthday or that you can't have gluten. A friend remembers things. A friend is sensitive to call you when you're going through a hard time or check in on you when you need it. We can have that relationship with the Lord. It only takes intention. He's not going to push himself on us. He's not going to say, read my book. But if we want to hear his voice, we want to understand how he thinks, then we probably should pick it up. If we're confused about something, wouldn't we call up our friend and say, this is confusing. I don't understand this. That's what we do in our normal friendship. And I want you to interact with the Lord, obviously with honor and respect, but also with intimacy in mind. You don't have to be perfect because God is there to lead you. If we begin to see him as the kind of father that he is, it's not scary to make mistakes. We don't need to hide away. Every single time I've come to the Lord with a humble heart and asked for forgiveness, I can't remember one time when he's ever said no. There's just never been a time. He has taken away the guilt and the shame, the burden of it. He's replaced it with joy, given me encouragement and helped me move along and get better. This is a God that wants to work with us. He's not scary. He's a lot of fun. I've had very many funny things that the Lord has done over the years. I personally enjoy the person of God. I want you to enjoy him just as much as I do. So let's get into this. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? First Kings 19, 11 through 13. If God speaks in a still small voice and we're constantly being bombarded by social media and television and distractions here and there, packing our schedules. How are we going to hear from him? Truly, when I'm that busy, I don't even pick up the phone. If I do that in the natural realm. Imagine our spiritual receptors are not even open to receiving his messages. When I want to hear from the Lord, the first thing that I do, get off all social media. And then I also fast from YouTube. It is a distraction and it pulls you in. TikTok, same thing. When we really want to hear from God, we have to be intentional. It's the same thing with our real life friendships. 
If I say that I'm friends with someone and I don't remember they're allergic to gluten and I have them over and I serve them something they can't even have, how insensitive is that? We can't remember everything, but we should know certain things about the Lord and we should have open conversations with Him and we should be circling back and checking in. Are you okay with this, God? Is this okay with you? These are the types of things we actually do when we're in real relationship. I'm a housewife. I cook, I clean, I do laundry. I'm coming up with content. I'm always doing doing something. I'd like to have videos going on in the background so that I can keep my mind occupied. There have been times when the Lord says, turn it off. And I'm like, God, I was really interested. I was learning. And about he was like, um, I'm here. I can learn about God through Derek Prince, or I can speak to God directly and let him download things to me. It's amazing. He wants to have that time with us. That's how sweet he is. It takes a moment sometimes of silence and an opportunity for him to pass something on to us when he's ready. If we're not making those moments available for him, how can he actually be heard? Being silent. When I want to be entertained, I push down that immediate gratification of my mind being preoccupied. I say, okay, flesh, it is not time for you. Think about when you take a shower. This is where I hear from the Lord a lot. Why? Because you don't really have anything going on in the shower. What if you could hear from God as often as you do in the shower all throughout the day if you were just to conscientiously shut down those distractions? That's really something to think about. We could probably probably be hearing from the Lord a little bit more if we were shutting down other things. God told us to take dominion over our own flesh. He doesn't want us to go and conquer Rome. We're not able to take control of that one little thing. Then how can we take dominion outside of us and lead a company of people and bring people further along if we're not able to control our own flesh? This is what we're all called to do. This is something that takes discipline and time. You will actually reap a lot of benefits from this because how can we give the world anything powerful if we're not tapped into the source of power, which is the Lord. This is something only Christians can bring into this world because he is the giver of truth. He can actually use us to speak into someone else's life. How can that happen if we're not hearing from him? I'm not saying all of this to condemn anybody. I understand how hard it is to hear the voice of God when you're so distracted, when all these things are going on. We are living in a time when it's really important to hear the voice of God. The Lord will act actually have me do a practice of silence where I will watch my words. So I'll be on a word fast, conscientiously watch the amount of words that come out of my mouth. I'm not just saying random words. I'm clearing out the atmosphere of my own thoughts and my own words and extra noise. This gives me the ability to hear from him. Sometimes the Lord will speak to me in visions and dreams. I'll wake up, I'll have to write it down in my journal or I'll put it in an audio text. Whenever you hear from the Lord, it's really important to catch those moments it's almost like taking a Polaroid picture and remembering, this is what God told me. I'm going to look over this over time. I'm going to check this with my friends. I'm going to pray over it and see how it lines up with God's word. If we are really treasuring the little things that he gives us and we take those things as valuable, then he is more likely to give us a little bit more. If you were to give a gift to a friend and they were like, yeah, thanks, and not really give a genuine thank you, would that motivate you to continue giving to that friend? I would say no. I got a lot of love to give. I don't want to waste it on someone that's not actually receptive. I'm going to save that for somebody who's actually going to do something with it. That is wisdom. Why do you think the Lord would just keep talking to you if you're not listening, not capturing those things, not treasuring those things, you're not reading the word and saying, how does this line up with God's word? If we are not stewarding that thing well, then why would the Lord give anymore? I also recommend that if you have a trusted person that loves the Lord, that you can give your ideas and the things that you're hearing from him and kind of bounce these ideas off that person. This is what I heard from the Lord. Can you pray about it? What do you hear about that? I have a friend that will actually pray about it. It's wonderful to be able to have those believer friends that take your faith just as seriously. They can lift you up and you can lift them up. There's something very supernatural about those kind of friendships. Begin to pray and ask for people that will foster a deeper connection with God. I've mentioned this before, but please read your Bible with intention. If there's an area that you struggle with. Let's say it's forgiveness. Then do a study on forgiveness. Start researching all the Bible verses that have to do with forgiveness and then see what God has to say about it. Start to look at the Bible through the eyes of forgiveness. How many instances are you reading about in the Old Testament, in the New Testament of people forgiving? I think of the great Joseph. His brothers put him in this pit and he became a slave. Then the Lord elevated him behind the scenes. Years had passed by. He ran into his brothers again and it was such 
a powerful thing that the Lord already ministered to his heart to forgive and he was ready to do it when the time came. That's just one example of how we can research on topics and themes so we can go a little bit deeper. I recommend reading the passages that the Lord highlights to you. If he calls you to memorize them, start writing them down. Write down the verse over and over again until it really gets deep into your spirit. I feel like that's a great investment. The most precious thing really is the word, to have that memorized. No matter what happens in this world, we have no idea where we're going to be in a year or two or what's going to happen. But if we have the word of God buried inside of us, no one can take that. They could take your Bible, but if you have a bunch of verses memorized, they can't take that from you. It's really important for us as believers to truly take Bible memorization to the next level. I also believe in asking the Lord for an assignment. While he's already working in you, ask him to put you to work. He's put fantastic, creative ideas. Even if I had limited funds, a limited ability to drive somewhere, he gave me creative ideas on how to work around that. And he will for you too. You can't just say, well, I have no money. I guess I can't do anything. No, we're not going to limit God. We're going to say, God, I have no money, but I have some time. Who can I pray for? What can I do? He'll give you creative ideas. He gave my friend an idea that went to church and he heard about shut-ins and widows and he wrote encouraging cards to them. I'm part of his ministry now. When I'm hitting a rough patch, especially, I start thinking about the people who are having it even worse than me. I lift them up in prayer. I send them some encouragement. There's always something that we can do that's creative and it's outside of the box. We just have to make ourselves available. When we begin to obey the Lord, we will hear from him even more. Any of you have tips on how you hear from the Lord? Share that in the comments below. We all want to grow. We all have our own personal ways that the Lord speaks to us. It's important to share how God speaks, especially because all of us are so different. We're going to hear all these amazing things of what the Lord does and we're going to learn and grow together because we're going to take each other's tips and try them out. Thank you for sticking with this video. I really appreciate you and I'll talk to you in the comments. Take care.